she texted me and she's like, oh my god, sorry I didn't know the project tonight. I was in the club. <laughs> oh my <laughs> Hi, I'm Gabriel. Hi, I'm Vanessa. Hi, I'm Kimberly. Hi, I'm Leah, and this is Zula Chick Chat. So, in the previous episode of Chick Chat, we talked about what to expect when you go for uni camp. So, today we're here to talk about what to expect when you go for university itself. So, for you guys, what university do you come from? Oh, I'm from SMU School of Economics. Uh, I'm in my final year of Wikimi at NTU. I was at SIM University at Buffalo, Communications. I was from NUS Business. So moving on, the next question would be what was your experience like? So the first one, maybe you talk about like your social life. Like, what do you think about the entire culture in school? For me, I had a lot of group of friends because I wanted to get back hall stay. So I joined like hall softball, I joined hall dance, joined hall this and that. But eventually, I guess you just mingle around a lot, but you just find that few friends you really click with and then you just stick with them. For me, I didn't really have a social life. Because I was. Tra- <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was training, so oh. it was like school training, school training. So. Do you make like a group of friends at school? Oh yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> I'm, just like, so I'm just alone. I, mean, I have a great, great circle of friends. Okay. Shout out to my math gods. Because econs is a lot of math. I'm thankful that I met them. I had two core groups. Yeah. We were together since first semester. UB people are very, very friendly, and it was wonderful, lah. Actually, for me, my friends were mostly from Hall slash residential college. If we stay in university town in NUS, because. I didn't go for like camps and stuff in like my faculty, right? So I didn't really have that like what whole group of friends. Mm. But I did find friends along the way of the social life aspect of it, like the culture of it in school is like you see your friends almost every single day. Yeah. It's very like training a lot of times. Personally, you need to know when to prioritize certain people and when to prioritize yourself. SMU, yeah. everyone like basically studies and library is always full. So your group of people that you see every day is all we're all studying together. I guess that's bonding in a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair. I think for me, like partying was a big part of my freshie and second year. There's a lot of people who don't drink, but mm. they still go, mm. and it's okay because then they just drink like water or like coke. I yeah. think you just don't conform to like peer pressure in that sense. I mean, like if you don't want to say no. Okay, so now I think the most important thing is like academics. So what do you think about the whole entire structure in university and how do you cope with it? I know for my school it's like quite different from NTU and NUS because we yeah. just have seminars. Like one professor to about 40-ish. Even there's a lot of class participation. Like, they have to display your name. So you don't say anything, they'll be like, excuse me, uh, what do you think about this? And then yeah, the whole class will look at you. But I think it's a good skill that they make us have. So like when you go out, you really know how to like talk to people, know how to present yourself. We had class part, it was like 10% of the total grade okay. for every single module. Like. Yeah. But actually, now that I think of it, right? Most of the students in University of Buffalo they already take the initiative to just like mm. speak. Yeah. Mm. That's quite good. Yeah, right? I yeah. found it amazing. Like. I gotta force See, on it. Like, I always just like, every class I'm like, oh my god, think of something to say. Think of one thing to say. Just one thing and don't sound stupid. <laughs> like, I would say workload was manageable, mm. but because I had a lot of extra activities outside of school, it became a bit like harder to focus on school studies. Mm, yeah. That's true. So a lot of times I think it's about managing your time and expectations. Uh. From JC, I already know how to, you know, I have mm. training and in school. So technically mm. I put like the same thing for uni. Mm. Mm. For me, I'm just very thankful that all the friends I made in uni, they all were very, very understanding of mm. like my training schedules. When I first went to university, I was assigned five modules. Mm. One of hours per module. It doesn't seem like much, right? It was three modules per day, mm. every day. Except for Friday, Friday we only had like a 12 p.m. class. Mm. Even then, right, just these five modules already killed me. But I, I pulled through the first semester, second semester onwards. I'm more used to it. You really, really need to plan your modules around the stuff that you want to do every day. In my second year, first sem, is I joined council and dance. But I had to leave dance a month in because it was tough. So actually, you meet seniors is very important, eh? Because mm. like a lot of times they teach you about like what modules you can bid for, what yeah. modules you can yes. for, what modules you choose. Which ones are easy to score in? And all that. Yeah. yeah, and like what you can learn from it as well. Yeah. Like the professors. Yeah, the profs. <laughs> Overall, the academics thing, right? Like, I think it depends on your structure of your school. So, like, a lot of it is for heavy focus on class, but a lot of it on like group work, right? Mm. Yeah, I think that's most likely the rough structure of the modules. So, what's your experience with doing extracurricular activities? For me, it's like, I mean, if you don't join CCA, you can join to FESI or camp. For NTU, there's so many options available to you. We like acting, there's whole like production. Mm. There's also school production. There are a lot of activities in SIM. Theatre, dance, there's sports, sociology and psychology club. There's an anime club. Every semester, they'll take out one day and make this place with like sofas all around into like a Japanese tea party. So cute! Restaurant. 
cute. It's like it's supposed to be like a full on Japanese anime cosplayer cafe. Yeah. So I think in general there are like a lot of activities for all the different schools, uh, be it private or like local university or anything. These different activities have different commitment levels, so choose what you want based on that. Lah. I think one factor when it comes to the, you know deciding universities or where to go to is like the hall factor, mm -hmm. whether you can stay on campus and stuff like that. Freshies are guaranteed two year hall stay from the start. It's really fun because like you can hang out whenever, wherever, mm -hmm. at all hours. So when <laughs> someone be like, you want supper? Then yeah. like, Okay, let's go. That's commitment. Eh. <laughs> then she like cannot. She like I need to sleep at ten. Eh. How would yeah. I go eat supper? <laughs> the hall experience was really, really very fun. It's one of the best things that I agreed to do. Yeah, and I stayed in like a suite, so it was like six people. We have a shared common area and a shared toilet. And there were a lot of people who made an effort to like have a, like a cohesion. Do you get to like choose your home? Oh, you can actually. But at the same time, you can be very lucky to end up with people that you'll be very close to for the rest of your life. Mm. I guess. Mm. Yeah. I know yeah. for NTU like because. You have double rooms only, we don't have like suites. So mm. like a lot of people like they always worry in their fresh year, like, oh, if I don't have a roomie, like a friend already, will I get a terrible roomie? Mm. And I had I've heard stories of people who like found good roomies. Yeah. And I've heard people who have, who've had like terrible roomies. SMU doesn't have like a hostel per se, it's like a residential area away from school, so you have to walk. I also heard like people who go in together as friends and then they yeah. end up not like yeah. <laughs> that happens to each other. Next question is when you first entered yeah. university, do you get any like culture shock? Not really, but like the only shock to me was that I had to class part. <laughs> like you know it got so bad, right? That there was one time I was gonna race, right? Then I race, then I got a bad cramp, I put my hand down. Oh, no. <laughs> Then it got better, it comes with practice. I think for me, I didn't have much of a culture shock since I went to poly. It's kind of the same. But I think one thing about NTU was that it's huge. Yeah. I was quite lost and I'm still quite lost now even oh though I'm in my final year. Yeah. Like, Actually that's true. Uh. NTU yeah. also, I won't know how yeah, to go the, all the campus places. is huge. And I think one important thing about uni is a lot of it is dependent on yourself. Mm. So like no one's going to tell you to do things. Mm. Actually the culture shock about being independent was real eh. Yeah. Because the only reason why I didn't go for camp is because I thought they were going to send me a damn email to invite me to this camp and it never happened so I was like what the hell is this camp then turns out I had to go and like go for some matriculation thing and find out about it from there which I didn't even know about it so mm. I was like alright yeah. okay I was from GC right I went there thinking that I'm gonna be with a lot of people who are from poly and the poly people are already used to doing things in a group setting lah. so I thought I had to be prepared for that I'm not saying that poly people are a certain way and JC people are a certain way what I'm saying is see, I met people who really really refuse to do any work whatsoever <gasps> there was this one girl yeah. in my group she wasn't a friend of mine lah, but we were acquaintances because of the group thing 3am in the morning lah. I was still doing a group project she texted me she's like oh my god sorry I didn't do the project tonight I was in the club <laughs> oh my <laughs> I was picking up all the pieces thinking that someone would actually come and have the initiative to help me finish the project. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like you guys say, I think independence is especially important. I think for me, the culture shock was that it was very, very competitive. Alongside with the class part thing, right? I was like looked down upon by so many of my peers, right? For not studying or putting in the same amount of effort. My acquaintances, they just like, oh, you just every day like work there and like never study. Is it, hey, is it you just want to work retail? Ah? Then I'm like, <laughs> just because I'm not studying doesn't mean that I can't get a job in the future and I worked right I did work that will help me in the future or like doing things that I like so I like fashion so I worked as a stylist so this is something that could have helped me in my portfolio in the future mm, yeah. I did pass and I did do my work I wasn't like those group mates who don't do my work okay hello you may face that kind of like social pressure to conform to only studying or only hanging out at hall activities or only doing certain things but do what is like best for you I guess so I think there's this common misconception I would say that you have to choose between academic, social life and sleep. So it's three choose two. So is yep. it accurate? For me, yes, because I really like took out social life. <laughs> I mean, I have friends, but like when I go find my friends, it's like for lunch. Mm. So that's my social life. I think for me, I join a lot of activities. Mm. So sleep. Oh. I didn't sacrifice anything. As um. I managed to study well, I managed to socialize well, and I slept yeah. well when I wanted to. I would say I sacrifice academics because I work part time. So when I work outside, right, it takes up a lot of time away from studying, obviously, or like resting in general. What are some maybe go to do's and don'ts for? people who are heading into university. Go and do your research, like which modules you have to bid for, like how, how many modules you need to complete for core, this oh, and that. Oh, that's something that like a lot of my friends face. Yeah. So. Do check your emails, because a lot of stuff go into your emails. And do try out new things while you can. Mm. Like because uni is like the last yeah. academic phase of your life before you enter the working world. Don't latch onto other people who clearly have the ability to do work proper. <laughs> okay, don't do that. Be independent, manage your own things. 
obviously manage your own work because after all, if not shared, it's obviously your own work as well. And to be patient. There are people who may, may not seem interactive, who may not seem like they have a lot of initiative yet. I also think like, don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm. <laughs> That's why it's one thing, but like, after the thing you don't understand, you ask a professor, like email. Usually, they're very nice. They mm. will really go and help you. I think to be independent is the most important thing. Yeah. Like what Kim said, like do your research about it. Mm. And also, I feel that don't be so caught up in the whole academic side of it. Ultimately, uni is a place where they have many many opportunities whether it comes to internships work CCAs activities right? there's so many things you can do there you have more time in uni that you don't have to do a 9 to 6 every day do take advantage of that time to learn things that will benefit you for your own skill and also have fun with your friends lah. so today we talked about our university experience and we concluded that make the most of your final few years of studying so if you guys have any questions about university or any stories to share feel free to leave it in the comments and also let us know what else to talk about next time and don't forget to like, share and subscribe <laughs> bye, bye. Bye! <laughs>